Welcome back to episode 51 of Tallboy Radio. And if you recognise the voice, it's me, it's Gaz. I'm in the driver's seat again. Um, and I think the first thing um, for me to say, as this is the first one that we are actually recording in the new year, is happy 2021 to everybody. Um, I hope that you had a safe Christmas and a relaxing time over the new year. Um, obviously, I've got my two buds with me Um tonight so guys if you want to sort of give a quick hello and um tell everybody what you're drinking ad do you want to go first yeah uh same as guys would like to say, i also like to say happy new year to everybody I'd like to say this is our our first time back since we recorded i would say probably middle of december so i don't know about you guys but i'm feeling a little bit rusty but hopefully this one will uh will smooth the gears it is nice. uh Goose Island IPA, I like this one, 5.9%. I think it's made in Chicago way, certainly. I'm sure it's Illinois anyway, dude. So. Like out of town. Drink, drink one to you there. Nice. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Andy, what, what is it you're drinking? Howdy. Uh, I'm drinking a TBR Classic. Uh, just Vimto in a <laughs> BR Odd Dat glass. <laughs> <laughs> is that actually just Vimto? Yeah, my um, I pretty much drank non-stop for the last couple of months, so I thought I'd give my uh, liver a break, so I'd kick its ass again <laughs> next month. <laughs> are you doing, <laughs> are you doing dry again. January? Are you? Is that what you're going to do? Or? Uh, I'm debating it. I mean, I've I drank all my beer. I've just got, well, I said I've I got loads of Stella, Stella, and um, mm. rum and whiskey. Still, I'm not I'm not including rum and whiskey in that no alcohol stuff. <laughs> just beer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a dry January just from beer whiskeys yeah. and everything else you're okay yeah, yeah. Well, that's medicinal oh, okay. so it's yeah, a sort of sense. half dry January then it's a sort of yeah, yeah. okay that's okay. just to fight the uh, yeah it's medicinal what I <laughs> uh, brilliant well I am on a good old fashioned um, TBR favourite which is the um, Leffe uh, again and um, this glass having not been put in the dishwasher is the <laughs> um, TBR podcast um, glass um, don't know whether or not you want to give any shout outs. There's a couple of people that um, I need to sort of say sort of um, a couple of shout outs to. So um, obviously Amy, who has been my able assistant. Amy's my uh, my daughter, eldest daughter. She was my able assistant and my research assistant for this episode. So um, if you've got any beef, then direct to her way, not my way. Um, again, regular listeners um, sort of um, little Daz Vron, um, the normal guys, sort of the darting crew. Hopefully we've got a couple of new recruits this year in terms of listeners. I know that Chris... Um, and Jordan said that they might um, drop a listen, so um, I'm hoping that that they uh, that they jump on board. Um, I'm not going to sort of uh, mention everybody on social media that helps us out and retweets and stuff. Um, I know I'd, perhaps you want to mention a couple of guys. So um, do you want to give a couple of shout outs or? Yeah, um, the main shout out I had actually was for our pals in Oklahoma, Tiddy and China who are taking their show in a slightly different direction. So if you listen to the Tilly and Shiner show, you can now watch it because they're taking it live, which is pretty brave, on YouTube starting. I think this Wednesday they're going to be recording their their podcast live on there and then they're going to edit that down for the audio version so that people can actually ask them questions while they're recording it, which is quite a nice little take on things. And then the only other two that I'd like to give a shout-out to is... Number 24 and 25 of the countries that TBR is now rolling through. Yes. So 24 was Brunei. I don't know if it's the Sultan himself listening to us. I'd like to if, think so. If it is, then thank you very much. That's it, yeah. We, uh, we you know, we can set up a GoFundMe page just <laughs> particularly for you if you're really interested. Buy some uh, merch. Yeah, buy some merch. Actually, yeah, we'll get on to that in a second because we've got a new merch page. And number 25 was New Zealand. So that ticks all the boxes so we're on every continent now if you don't include antarctica, antarctica. that's mad yeah. though when you think about it yeah. it's like every you know there's somebody in every continent just listening to us three goons talk about yeah. stuff every week it's great and we're still in the charts in poland now for three months and we're at number 38 so we're we've rising we've risen we we're yeah. rising we're shooting up the uh up, up the uh the, the poles as they say, if you excuse me. Hey. <laughs> um, Andy, just before Adam mentions the merch, is there anyone that you want to give a, a sort of a particular shout out to? Anyone in particular? Oh. <laughs> no. No, <it's> the <laughs> usual people here. 
Like just you, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, Jim Malliard, um, purposely curious, Scottish alchemist, those type, obviously, Dave and Double Trouble, Dark Wolf, all of those people that sort of give us shout outs. Um, Dark Wolf, if you're listening, thanks very much for the thumbs up. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so, Ad, do you want to mention the merch, the new page? Yeah, yeah, we had we had a little bit of feedback, didn't we, over the Christmas uh, period, saying that actually the, the site that we were using was arguably a little bit expensive. Obviously, it was all being shipped in from Germany, so you know that did add to the cost a little bit. And then obviously the problems that we've had with Royal Mail since, not us personally, but you know things coming and going from the continent, it's made you know it's, it's caused problems. So we reviewed it and we've moved our merch site to Redbubble. Still click on the same link on tallboyradio.com and it takes you there. But I think you'll find it's a little bit more reasonably priced. It's probably, you know, for, for a T-shirt, it'll probably save you about five, ten quid. Yeah. Um, so you can pick up a T-shirt shipped for 20 quid. Um, and obviously, with it being a new site, there's new products available as well. So if you wanted your tall boy radio bedding or a shower curtain <laughs> or even a mini skirt, you know, if that, that's, you know, I know Gaz was thinking of getting himself one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you say that. I can't wait to see the uh, the, 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 the psycho um, shower curtain with um, Andy's <laughs> Andy's ugly mug on it. I can't wait to see that that out there. <laughs> that, 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 that's one I'm particularly looking for. I mean, the T-shirt oh, that I'm especially. wearing there. Which oh, yeah. So there you go. So that's um, that's uh, what the Fudge T-shirt and that came um, from. Um, obviously, our page, um, great quality, decent, uh, and I'd say um, a little bit cheaper than uh, than the previous one. So, but go and check it out. And if anyone else got any ideas um, for sort of merch that you know we we could possibly um, sort of start to look at, at sort of stocking in the future, then give give, give us a shout. Yeah, wonderful. Beer Absolutely, mats. <laughs> beer mats. I mean, I was thinking, do we go keyrings? Do we go bottle openers? You know, um, that that's so. Do we do like um, for the winter? It's been snowy and icy. Do we do some car scrapers with our logo on? Or you know, there's like loads of little things. So, but if anyone has got any ideas, then um, give us a shout and um, and we'll see what we can do. Um, right. So swiftly moving on. Um, this episode, I hope some of you will find. Um, enlightening i hope some of you will find um some interesting stuff to try out and episode 51 um is we're into a new year we're always looking for that sort of tiny little thing that can help us save time or save energy or save money or whatever so um i just thought about putting a podcast together basically calling it life hacks so those things that maybe um you might have heard about that you've never tried or you've never heard of them and you you want us to sort of um provide some for you i mean obviously if you if you go online and stuff um that there's lots of things out there um i'm just going to go through a couple of ones that i've picked up a couple of sort of um do's and don'ts a couple of life hacks that i might use and then i'm going to throw it over open and throw it over to to the lads just to see what see what they they say so the first one um and and it was a life hack that I, I obviously never realised this, and, and it was only recently that, that Jenny, my wife, realised it, is if you've got, you know when you're cooking, if you're cooking pasta, I don't know about you guys, I always do, particularly spaghetti, I always do way too much, and you cook like just an absolute enormous amount, and you end up like, oh my God, I've cooked so much. And one of the life hacks, I suppose, was when you've got the, you, your sort of spoon, your, your sort of um, spaghetti spoon, there's actually a hole in the middle, and I didn't know this. And apparently that hole is there because that's a perfect portion of pasta for one person. Now, Ad's nodding his head because I think I think he knows this because Ad's a bit of a chef, you see. So I think he knows. I never knew this. Yeah. So And that's been like not quite life-changing for me. But I always <laughs> used to go like spaghetti. You sort of you hold it like that and you go, yeah, that's about right. But I never realised that, that the hole in the middle of the spoon is designed for one portion of spaghetti. Did you know that, guys? I, I did know that one. That that one's a bit too clever for me, though. Uh, but I tell you what, I have got. I, you know, uh, similar to that. If you know, you know, I have to be poking things through a spoon numerous times. I have got a beer bottle opener, uh, beer beer and Moretti branded as well. Gaza, so you'll nice, like it. Nice. It shows the one, two, and three por- per, por- portions per person uh, ratio as well. So if you're going to poke your spoon you through go. that, yeah. So it's that's nice. pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Ne- never knew that because I always do. I'm just waiting for the the one that shows if you're going to do pen or you're going to do you know if you're going to do fusilli mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, how do you measure that? Because I still do too much. But um, so yeah, that's right. And then the only other, there was another one to do with um, sort of cooking while I run it is the, on certain pans you've got the handle and you've got like almost like a little sort of um, hole at the end of of a handle or it's slightly 
um, angled. And I never realised that's to put a spoon in. So effectively, if you're going to stir your stuff, like a, a, rather than using like a, a, a dish or a tray or something on the side, you basically just shove your spoon in and you can angle it so it drips over the pan. So you don't... And now I never knew that. And literally, mm. it's like an angle and you, you, you've got your pan and you shove your, your sort of your wooden spoon in and it sticks in. And then if you've got anything on your spoon, it just goes into the pan again. So you don't have to put it on your, you know, your, your surfaces or anything like that. Never knew that. Definitely going to give that a go. It makes things way easier. Um, Gas, what, so, Gas why, why would you give it a go when you, you literally just use a microwave and a kettle <laughs> to make a pot noodle? <laughs> There's nothing you, wrong with pot noodles. If you had a life hack, it's where you put your fork after you'd stirred your pot noodle, then, then that would be useful for you. <laughs> Hey, I've, you know, I, I can do beans on toast and cheese on toast. I'm, I'm, I'm progressing. <laughs> well, it's, it's better than Andy. He gets all his food delivered. All he has to do is chuck it in a wok, add a bit of sauce, away you go. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Mate, that, that could be his life hack. <laughs> that, that could be. Go on then, Andy. I don't know whether or not you, you've, you've got any, but um, is, is there anyone that you've, you've looked at? Is there anyone that you think, actually, you know what? Is there a life hack that you use that maybe me and Adam don't, or is there one that you've sort of read about or researched that you thought, oh, actually, that, that's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give that a go? Uh, I, don't, I don't have two simple ones. Um, one is if, you want, if you're going to chill something like a beer, put a wet napkin on it and put it in your freezer. Yeah. Apparently that's quicker than just throwing it straight in your freezer. Or, or do I do and forget about it in the freezer <laughs> when, you get your, <laughs> when you get it out? It's like... Oh, it's it's crusted on it. <laughs> oh, it's rancid. But, um, the other one's like if you go to a drive through or somewhere where you, where you pick up your food, and if you've got heated seats as well, just turn your heated seats on and put your food on it and it keeps it warm. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I think I did see that. I think somebody mentioned like, if, you, you, if you did go in like pizza and stuff, just put like your, you know, like put your, like, your pizza tray, you put it directly onto the, 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 the seat, but put your, your seat heater on and that works. So yeah, I like that. And it, let's see. See food, food, absolute. Yeah. Can't, can't, can't fault any sort of life hacks to do food. Um, you mentioned boiling water, um, and again, recently, I, I got sort of a bit shouted at by Jenny because rather than using sort of de so if if I've, you boil a kettle and you have a, you, a cup of coffee, whatever tea in the morning, and it's like, oh, I'll just pour some some warm water onto my windscreen, and it's like, just it goes straight away. But then it, Jenny's like, oh, make sure it's not too hot because like it'll crack your windscreen and all that. So there's another little hack is actually just put a little bit of tepid water, just put it into a bag, basically, you know, like a Ziploc bag. And basically, then all you need to do is just run that across your windscreen, and literally, yeah, obviously, because it, it's it's warm, but actually, you don't, don't get the damage to your windscreen, it's just a bit cracking and stuff. So that that's one that I, I was like, oh. Ah, yeah, okay. That and actually that makes sense and that sort of works. So um so that's one that um and I, I've only just found that out now. I wish I'd have found that out a couple of weeks ago when it's freezing cold, but <laughs> hey there again, we we live and learn. Maybe, maybe next time we get a big deep freeze. Um, after you poured your kettle on your windscreen. After a <laughs> absolutely, yeah. No, absolutely. I, I know someone who's done that before and it cracked straight away. Like, really? Uh, wow. Can it was you imagine yeah, I've got no ice. Yeah, but you've got no windscreen either. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got a chicken and mushroom pot noodle to enjoy while, while you're waiting for the AA. <laughs> and it is chicken and, pot, chicken and mushroom as well. There's no other, no other flavours available. It has to be chicken and mushroom. So, um, I mean, the, the, there's loads. You, you look at, and and I was trying to think of, do we go down the categories and go, okay, so we've got a food one. Do we do like a DIY one? Do we do, you know, there's a couple... A couple in particular, I'm terrible at DIY, and I, I make horrendous mess of various sort of walls and cabinets and stuff when I do DIY. But there was a couple that I looked at, um, and, and I don't know whether or not you ever know when 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 there's um you thread. So you've got a screwdriver, and literally it, the, the screw head is threaded, and you literally turn it, and it's just you just can't get any grip. Apparently, if you lay an elastic band over the, the head of the screw, and then you put your screwdriver effectively onto the elastic band. And push down onto the screw and give it a turn. Apparently, it, it works happy days. So effectively, you know, because you know, sometimes when you're turning it and, it and literally it's threaded and you can't get any purchase on it, so therefore it doesn't come out. Lie, lie an elastic band over it. Put the screwdriver effectively through the elastic band and turn. Bob's your uncle out straight away. Absolute no bother. Oh, wow. um, and I didn't know that. Well. So next time there's a threaded screw, I'll, I'll try. The other one is if you're trying to remove a nail from a wall if you're using again the hammer and, and as you as you sort of remove it from the wall it marks the wall underneath because obviously you've got then the, the head of the hammer that then hits the wall 
just just lie a little sponge underneath. Just hold a little sponge underneath your hammer, and then as you then take the nail out of the wall, no mark whatsoever. So there's just a couple there, just a couple sort of DIY sort of based um, hacks that I, I, I didn't know, um, and I'm terrible, and I will damage pretty much anything. Um, so there's a couple there that I, I thought about doing. Ad, do you want to, do you want to throw one? Um, do you want to throw one at us then? Because I know that you, you, you posted a photo of you reading the, was it the Book of Life hacks or whatever it was <laughs> yeah. over, over the Christmas break? So you, yeah, you know. well, we decided, we were, well, it was your idea, wasn't it, to do it? I think just as we were finishing off recording the last one, we thought, we said what we're going to do the next one about. And you said life hacks. We thought, That's a really good idea. And then Christmas morning, Kim opens up this this book, like a little book of life hacks. <laughs> Put that to one side. I, I, <laughs> to be honest, I didn't get too much out of it. I was, uh, I was oh, okay. uh, watching the darts. Yes, go on. But you must have done. Have you got one subsequently, or is there, is there one that you want to share with us? Or well, there was one, and it's it's a cooking one actually. And I'm not going to charge you for this one, but I have been paid for this in the past. I sent one. You know, when I was talking about it, Kim said, "Do you remember that one you said I have to take a break?" Now let's make it clear. I'm not a regular <laughs> take a break reader, but Kim on the magazine. So she said, like, oh, you can get fifty quid for for life hacks here. I said, well. When I make a poached egg, if you if you ever if you guys ever tried making poached egg, they yeah, are difficult. Terrible. Listen, yeah. I just just pour it. In. You're supposed to swirl the water. I will put a bit of vinegar in really, or whatever. Yeah. I yeah. bang it in. It just <laughs> it's terrible. So if you if you bag it up in a little bit of cling film and just drop it in, perfect poached egg every single time keeps it together. And yeah, and that was printed. Uh, actually, I think Kim might have stolen that. Had her name in it, but yeah, we got paid. I think fifty quid by take a break for sending that. Bad no boy. way! Happy yeah. days. So uh, get the money flooding in, guys. There you go. So try yeah, that. That's it, yeah, actually, Brilliant. to be fair, that's that's another life hack. Listen to this podcast. Write down everything we say and send it off to magazines. You could make a fortune. Why are we not doing that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why aren't we doing that? We why are we charging doing that? for this? <laughs> um, it's funny because. There was a cling film, and and again, this was on when I was looking at some DIY stuff. And you know when you sort of pour in paint into like a pot or something, just basically line the pot of cling film first. Line the pot of cling film, pour the paint into there, and then effectively you can do your sort of painting or whatever. And then you just literally just take the cling film out, and your pot is absolutely perfectly clean. So you, there's no there's no changing of you know you haven't got to wash it, you haven't got to do anything to it or whatever. So literally just line it all with cling film, line it first, paint in there. Happy days. See, we're making life easy for people. That's what we're doing. Too, too easy. Too you know easy. what I mean? If you're, if you're a DIY guy now, you're sitting there and you're thinking, well, I never. I never knew that. I'm going to do that. And well, I'm going to make it. I never knew guys does DIY. That's what people <laughs> well, well you, no, you're right, because I never do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely never do. But the next time the guy comes around that I pay to the DIY, I'll say, <laughs> you, know, you know what you should do with that? No, mate. Line it with cling film first. Yeah. It's the future. Not be right, so, off the bill for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll make it a five then. So, um, so what's the definition of a, of a life hack then? So, it, it, according to the dictionary, what what would be the definition of it? I guess it'd be something that made life a little bit easier. Um, to, to, you know, something. Yeah, that that would be, that would be it, would it? I don't know. Okay, so it's it's a strategy or technique adopted in order to manage one's time and daily activities in a more efficient way. So effectively, make life easier. And it was adopted basically when there was, back in the day, it was a phrase that was used for sort of um, your work-life balance. And effectively, when your work-life balance became a bit muddled and people finding it longer hours, harder work, they basically found all these ways to make their life easier. Um, and effectively, the, the sort of phrase life hack was was sort of, um, was born from that. Um, a, a slightly different, more updated page, it does say, a usually simple and clever tip or technique for accomplishing a familiar task to make it more easy or efficient. So, again, along the lines of something that we do that possibly in everyday life, it might take us a period of time. And actually with a life hack, it makes our life easier. Now, that could be in terms of the actual thing that you're doing, or it could be in the length of time that it takes you to do it. So basically something that we have, and, and we're, we all have them. And again, God, if there's any listeners out there, particularly in, in the new countries, Brunei, New Zealand, and any of the other um, 23 other countries, if you've got any life hacks, guys, and you want to sort of share them and you, you you don't mind us putting them out on there on social media, you know, by all means, get in touch with us, all the usual methods. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll put it out there, guys. Um, I'm going to ask you now, Coca-Cola. 
Is it just a drink or are the, are the hacks to do with the Coca-Cola? I don't know whether you've seen this before, but I, I did a bit of research and some of them you're a bit like, mm, not sure, but Coca-Cola then, go on, did, what, what, what life hack could you do with Coca-Cola? Wow, we, we did an episode called Beans Does Coke where we yes. tested, tested yeah. its cleaning power uh, and see how it compared to, um, I think it was Iron Brew, Red Bull, and sparkling water, right? Uh, just to see if it, you know, what the what it was that cleaned. what it would do. Yeah, I, if I remember correctly, actually, Iron Brew did a better job of the cleaning, or as good as the Coca Cola. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, I, I left the, the pennies in um, for twenty four hours. I remember correctly. Actually, I remember coming back from the shops like with this when I'd had the idea and uh, uh, sort of going through. And obviously, Matilda, like a mum, wants to know what have you wasted your money on. So, what have you got from the shops? So, when I told her I bought, bought a bottle of sparkling water, I have never seen anyone so excited. She was disappointed when she realised it was just bubbles in the water. She had, a, she was thinking full on glitter, sparkling water. <laughs> but yeah, that didn't work at all. all over face and <laughs> yeah, it'd be awesome. But no, um, yeah. So I know it's it's known for its cleaning um, yeah. abilities. Yeah. I, I does, it's supposed to be very good on toilets as well. Yeah, apparently it is, and and it's funny because I mentioned it to to, to Jenny. She was like, "Yeah, but then was there somebody on TV? It might have been online. There's some life hack doctor, or there's a there's a program they talk about life hacks and stuff, and they were talking about Coca Cola, and obviously." There was a birth of you know Coca Cola can clean this and can clean this and if you if you run it around your toilet and leave it overnight and stuff you get this beautifully sparkly sort of um, toilet sort of thing, but it actually doesn't kill any bacteria. So whilst oh, it might look okay. clean, it actually still is there sort of thing. So you can sort of take things with a pinch of salt. I know they're very good for sort of car bumpers and that sort of stuff and create rust. So if you've got any rust, literally bit of bit of Coca Cola. That 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 sort of that get gets rid of it. Um, and I, I was looking at it. Um, I don't know whether or not. Obviously, add Andy. You might not get this. Although Andy, maybe your facial hair. But if you get chewing gum stuck in your hair, rather than um, sort of cutting <laughs> off the hair, if you <laughs> if you if you soak it in Coca Cola, apparently that apparently that gets that gets rid of the uh, the chewing gum. I don't know how true that is. I'm not prepared to to road test that. I might. You're the only one who can. You're yeah. the only one who well, can. Well, I, can ask, I can ask Amy or Abby. I can ask them, right, just chew some chewing gum and then just put it in your hair and then let me pour this coke all over you, see if it works. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I genuinely, I, I don't know uh, wh- wh- whether it does, whether it doesn't. Um, there was one. Just, yeah, you just have to bear with me. I've got it on. There, there was one, and it said, what did it say? So, again, there was a toilet one. Um, oh, what was it? Oh, that was right. So, if you wanted to, if you've got um, snails or slugs, apparently Coca Cola is fantastic for killing them because they get attracted to it. They basically then drink it, and it kills them because it's acidic. So, um, so it's very good for pests. So, if you leave a, if you leave a, a like a, a little bowl of Coke out overnight, if you are particularly infested with slugs or snails, um, it's very good for sort of um, for, for for getting rid of them. Compost, it's quite good at as well for for sort of bottom your garden. So compost is coke oh, it's amazing isn't it you literally yeah. you do some um you, you do some research um apparently removed blood from t-shirts so i had when you went tumbling down uh, the <laughs> stairs in the uh, in the london underground um if you put a tiny little bit of coke in your washing machine with your detergent you water and everything else um i sh- i assume although i don't know it might be because of the effervescent nature and the bubbles and therefore it it but it can remove blood stains as well um, so i don't funny. know when you hear all those cleaning qualities, I'm starting to wonder whether I should be drinking it. <laughs> well, it's funny because the same. <laughs> cause you look at it, you think, okay, so you look, I mean, obviously it's horrendous. Some of the stuff you look at energy drinks, so you look at like, the monster drinks and Red Bull and stuff, you think, shouldn't really be drinking that. And then when you read all the stuff that Coke does, you're like, really? Yeah. <laughs> should, 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 does my stomach sort of... Does, 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 that, that, mean we can, that? does that mean we can chew Calgon then? <laughs> That is a joke. Nobody try that, please. <laughs> In the it's, tide pods of things. <laughs> it's funny because when I when I was talking to Jenny and we were going through life, she was like, you're going to have to say that, like, actually, you know, Coke isn't really that good for doing X, Y, and Z because you'll get loads of people going out, a bit like the old Trump, like, yeah, go and drink detergent or bleach. Or Don't yeah. do that, by the way. I'm not suggesting any of our listeners do that in any way, shape, or form. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously there's the – the cleaning of the coins there's the jewelry so you know like a bit like a tarnished jewelry so you can you can dip it into it, jewelry into coke and stuff and, it, and it'll come and buff up um but 
The only other one that I wanted to oh, cooking with Coca Cola. Have you ever cooked? Have you ever cooked a ham with Coca Cola? Yeah. It's like a gamble. With, uh, Andy, do it honestly, dude. Have you got a slow cooker? Have you yeah. got like a get a, get a ham joint? A bottle of Coca Cola doesn't have to be Coca Cola. It could be a, a branded own Coca. Cola. Get a little bit of um, roller cola. Yeah, that's fine. Other <laughs> brands are available. Um, you can get like some star anise. Get get some star anise, some black peppercorns in the. Um, in the slow cooker or whatever, bang it in there for like five, six hours or whatever. Happy days, mate. The, the gammon and the, the, the ham is absolutely gorgeous. There you go. Try try that. Do- Dr. Pepper works really well as well because that's got quite an unusual flavour. You know, that ah, works well. Oh, right. Yeah, I never uh, thought about that. And I know right now Andy's thinking, oh, I might try some fizzy Vimto with me ham. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried it with my gin, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> I just just going back to the coke and the cleaning. I don't, yeah, I go on. Yeah. Then, um, my van's got like um, polished, like metal hubcaps, and they're they're really rusty. And uh, Mrs. cleaned them with coke, and like hell of shine. Right. It took all the rust off them. Like. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You see, there you go. There you go. So you know what? Well, we're pro- we're proving a point. The only while you're on about coke and cars as well. Apparently, Coca Cola is very good for um, iced up windshields, windscreens. Apparently, it does get it does de ice them, but you might want to then just give it a rinse after because you don't want coke on the bonnet of your car or whatever, <laughs> splashing all over the place because that might make a bit of a mess. But yeah, apparently coke is very good for for, for windscreens as well. So there you go. You know things that we we thought that that we knew about Coca Cola that that we actually didn't. And I suppose it goes back to the actually should we be drinking it? Mm. There you awesome. go. Um, so is there anything in your workplace is there anything i mean obviously you, you two guys in, in sort of different jobs obviously we all have different jobs is there anything in terms of um a hack or is there anything in terms of at work that you think god i wish there was something that did and it, not necessarily an invention but is there anything that you can think of in terms of your work because years and years and years ago the life hacks came from um people working on computers and, and basically they were trying to find shortcuts of ways to do things and and that's the, where this sort of phrase became more widely used to IT guys that were trying to find different ways of of mismatching sort of coding or doing various things to computers, and that's where it was sort of born. So, is there anything in your job that you think, God, I wish there was something that did? And I'll, I'll give you one from my job in a second. But is there anything that you can think of, or shall I go first just to give you a minute? I, I have got one. Go on. Go on. Yeah, go. Oh, there we go. go no, go, go on. Then. Here we go. So, well, first of all, I work in IT, so. There's all sorts of automation stuff we have, but I was thinking, if I had someone that was just like me, could do my work, then I wouldn't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not so sure that's a lot. Of, uh, well, yeah. So basically, you want you, you want a robotic Andy or an Android what? Andy? Is that cloning. what you're saying? <laughs> cloning. Yeah. Yeah. Cloning would be, would be good. Yeah, he can have hair on his head and no beard, <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell him apart. Yeah, absolutely. Go on then, Ad. What, what, what was yours then? Well, it goes back to when we had a really cold snap in the winter a few years ago. Obviously, you know, I managed a shop. We'd literally used up all this, the salt and the grit on the on the floor outside. Then, you know, a couple of days later, it iced over again before I had a chance to get it in. And I was thinking, what else can I use to avoid getting sued by a customer that slips on the ice? So I had a go with dishwasher salts. I got a big bag of dishwasher salts, ripped it open and banged it down. Did every bit as good a job. So, you know, if, if you're, wow, you know, okay. if, so actually this is a bit of a snow and ice tip episode that we've got going on I as well. I tell you what. Yeah, you, everybody's got half a bag of, of um, dishwasher salt knocking around in the cupboard somewhere. So if you, you know, if you want to make sure your driveway's safe, bang a little bit of that down. I like. I thought, that. I thought you were going to say you poured coke everywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, I literally was going to say this is another one for coke that we didn't know. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Just you see, out at the back of his shop, just like emptying like liters <laughs> bottles of coke all over the place. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, you might not get any ice, but you've actually got no driveway left because the coke's just literally decimated it. For for me, I mean, obviously, pe- people know that I people know that I teach, and uh, and you'll understand why I say this. I mean, do do, do any of you remember? There was a little gadget, a little game, I suppose, years ago called Etch a Sketch. Do you remember Etch a Sketch? Yeah. So Etch a Sketch, you had those two little things, and one would draw a line going vertical, one would draw a line going horizontal. You could do. But what happened when you actually want you made a mistake and you wanted just to clean the screen? Can you remember what you did? Okay. Okay. So you could you could shake it, 
or there was a little runner at the bottom you could just go Shh. so there's a little knob at the bottom you could just go run it like across the bottom and then you go Shh, and, it, and it'll clean it was that on etch sketch or was that the other one oh, i thought etch sketch i thought etch sketch you should the other one was like that magnetic one where you because we've got one of those as well we've got an etch sketch i don't know that it's got one of those slidey I things it, on I it. i've got like a little you know there's a little slidey bit it, i apologize to the makers of etch sketch and metello whoever it was i don't know whether they know i'm yeah. making that up now i don't know it's them but if it's not etch sketch and i apologize but you, you so in my line of work Obviously, we, we do a lot with um, board pens and whiteboards and stuff. And so I genuinely wish a hack would be, is there any way of basically just going Shh, across a board and it just literally just wiping? <laughs> that would save teachers so much time. It is. Well, you, yeah, but you, you do that anyway, though. You wipe it out as you're going because you're an awkward left-hander. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's, and then you realise, what's all this on my hand? So, all right, it's, it's, so what does that say? Yeah, don't worry about that. Do you not have the um, smart screens where it's like a TV and you draw on it and all that? Yeah, you can. So um, it, the school, the, obviously the school I work at at the moment, um, so we're an independent sort of um, special school. So we we only, we only have a, a sort of um, a, a few pupils um, and we don't have the sort of um, the, the smart screens, touch screens. Now, obviously, lots of main screens, they, they, they get like Promethean boards or they get smart boards and stuff. And again, you get pens. And it's a bit like a computer screen, basically. You just project it, and you can obviously delete and wipe and do all sorts of stuff. But your traditional whiteboard, basically what you want is a great big board rubber that you just go shh, shh, like that, and it literally takes the whole thing off because you spend so much time, like, rubbing it off, walking across. That would be mint. So I was thinking I was thinking about, like, whiteboards and stuff, thinking about is there a little hack or an invention? And I thought, ah, that could be something. Um I haven't got quite got the technological now, so know how to think. Actually, how could you do that? Um, but I apologise to Etch Sketch if it was a shake one. I'm not sure that would work on a whiteboard either. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, maybe that's just a frustration of teaching you like shaking the board. <laughs> Why won't you get it? Um, but yeah, so so that was that. So that was that was just sort of something. And I just wondered whether or not there was anything in your in your jobs in your roles that you thought actually, you know what, in terms of a a hack or an invention it hasn't been invented yet but i wish there was something that did this or i wish another uh, you know another store manager or another it guy would show me how to do this quicker or do that quicker do you know what i mean just in, in your everyday life and, and and there's loads of little things that i suppose there's network of people but one thing one thing i, I was thinking about is i'd going back to your cooking days and, and i don't know whether you've got um um, when you've got your little cookbooks open and you've got your little recipes and you've got a double page, have you got like a nice little book holder, book stand sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you know what you could use if you hadn't got one of them? A trouser hanger. There's one. There's one for you with your two little clips. So you literally you got your little trouser. Oh, open them yeah, up, yeah. put them over, and and honestly, I read that and I thought, shit, yeah, you yeah. you could do that. <laughs> If you haven't got your little little book stand, it holds the book open at the right page. If you want to turn the page, you just unclip one of them. I tell you, honestly, smart. we're making it is it is pretty smart. Um, <laughs> yeah, it literally like that, just like you click, just there you go. Hold click the it on. Uh, the pizza box. Uh, That's it. And actually, if you've got some, if you've got something, obviously you guys are a lot taller than me. So if you've got something of head height, and you've got something you can actually hang the hanger on. Effectively, you can have the book in front of you, so you don't even have to keep looking down because you can just have it in front of you. Because it's suspended. It's another use for that, but I can't quite put my fingers on it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that you want to share with us, I know. <laughs> Swiftly <Swift> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it, what do we think? And, and I was just thinking about this it, whether it's a life hack or whether or not I'm going off on a slight tangent thinking, what is the then coming in the next? sort of five years, 10 years, whatever it may be. Is there anything you can think of that you think actually not, that's definitely going to happen? I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example. Effectively self-driving cars. We've sort of got it now, but, and it's not really a hack, but it, you know, the typical, was it like Johnny Cabs or whatever it is in, was it the Terminator film? Where literally you get in, it's Total like, recall. Please, total recall. I was like, please stay to your destination. Literally you get in and say, right, go to there. And the car just goes. And that's not really a hack, but, is there something that you think is coming in the future that you can think actually, you know, that's going to make our lives so much easier? And and I'm just throwing it out there. Obviously, I'm catching you cold, but is there anything that you think, you know, what? Yeah, actually, that is going to make life so much easier. Something in 
home brewing would be good, wouldn't it? You know, something that, you know, a foolproof way of making beer at home. Idiot proof. Mm. Or TBR proof home brews. Yeah. 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 Or just 10% proof. Beers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're there. We go. Yeah, he's here all week. I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I'll say whether it's a slight off on a tangent or whether it's not necessarily a hack as such. Um, the only other one, and again, I don't know whether or not there is one, is a remote control that does literally all of your things that you have, and they control like lights, TVs, <laughs> sky boxes. Because I don't know about you guys, you might have like two or three different ones, and it's like I literally wish there was one, and it would require. Hitachi to talk to Sanyo to talk to Samsung to and whatever, but is there one? We well, you can get like your Google Homes and the uh, what's the other one Alexa. Um, th- now that they, they you can get can them they do TV up. program stuff. Yeah, you can do you can do your TV through that as long as obviously oh, it's all compatible. It's, it's all got to be compatible. Yeah, of course. That, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you can do all sorts and you know link your Hive systems to it. Um, you do your do. light bulbs and your yeah. And your, I know you've done a bit of that, haven't you, Andy? Yeah, all the all the. Most of the lights, well, it lights all the lights in here, for example, my lamp and the two above are on the, the Philips Hue. So you just say, like, hey, Google, turn on the lights or whatever, and they all come on. Um, but yeah, you tell, we've got the Google Homes all around the house as well. So it's all different lamps and stuff at the minute. Yeah. Uh, we are looking you know, at blinds and stuff as well. Yeah, I know you could get you get if you got like blinds, you could sort of you know lower blinds or whatever, and you can sort of specify how much you want them to go up or down or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I just wish there was like because we've got like so we've got obviously we've had sort of new fireplace put in, and it's like a fake sort of flame, so you can have various flame heights on it and stuff. So there's one, you know, you've got the sky one. We've then got um, obviously we've got like a um, smart TV, so that's a separate one. And all of a sudden, you've got all we've got our, at the top of our chimney breast. We've got like a, a light a series of lights, and you can have them multicolored. So there's another one. So there's just four that I can think of in the lounge, and you're like, mm. really? And obviously, if, I mean, gone are the days, I suppose, where you have like DVD players, or whatever. But if you had like, you know, Xbox or DVD player, that'd be another one and stuff. And you're just like, really? There has to be some form of device or hack out there. Can't, can you not do it on one of these? Can you not just do it on on a smartphone? Surely there's a way, IT Andy, surely there's a way of going, there you go, literally controlling it just with your phone. Smart TVs you can. I mean, yeah. like Android and or Sony, for example, and Sky. Is it, is I know it? you can do, I know you can, obviously you can get the app and you can do, but can you do, can I change the channel yeah. on my Sky TV yeah, 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 via yeah. my phone? Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure you can. I, 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 mean, I haven't got the Sky TV app on my phone, if, but yeah, I'm sure you can, yeah. And I, I, and I, can, I can do my TV on there as well, yeah. <laughs> But you, I know Sky you can talk into the remote guy. And yeah, say, that's like, it. Yeah. Go to yeah, channel. Yeah, I, I know. Well. Yeah, so yeah, you you can, but and you can you can search for things using your voice control. And I know on the smart TV that we've got, you can do voice actually like volume up, volume down. And, and that's that's another life hack actually. If you didn't know that one with your Sky Q box, if you press the Q button on your Sky Q box, it makes your remote beep when you can't find it, which is about six or seven times a day when you got children. That <laughs> Where is old. it? Where have you put it? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. said so that. That for me was um, I just just to make things a bit easier, rather than having like duplicate sets of things, just have like one. Do you know what the other thing is? Is there an easy way for when you and, and I was thinking about this? Is there an easy way of creating, you know, if you're cutting keys rather than having to take it and get a, another one cut? Is there a way that you can effectively because a key would work if it was just moldy plastic, wouldn't it? Because it's effectively just the shape, it's not necessarily the actual material, is it? So it's just this, mm. so. Is there a way that you can like almost like oh, like play doh or whatever or, or like blue tack or whatever, literally mold the shape of your key? And is there a way that, and is there anything in the household that you could then create a resin of and make a replica? I don't know. We're in danger of giving tips for burglars here. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe so, but it, it, maybe, maybe so. Maybe Going so. back um, to the home automation stuff, you can get like a Yale lock and stuff like where it's controlled on your, on like an app. So right. say if you walk up to your front door, you just tap your phone on it and it'll unlock. Maybe really? Tell like Google and all that to unlock it and stuff as well, yeah. There's loads if you look, just Google home automation. There's loads of stuff oh, you can yeah. do. See, I didn't know you. I, I, I knew you can, obviously, you can control your lights and your heating and stuff when you remotely. And I know, obviously, you get 
it, you know we have obviously but when you, you know if you've got like big automatic gates on your driveway you can you can remotely open and close them sort of thing i didn't realize you could do it actually for locking your house yeah house alarms um cameras and stuff like i that get the house thing. alarm bit because obviously that's electronic so but how does it physically lock because obviously you, you, you haven't then got a lock to actually lock your door have you or it, oh, is on the, it... the yale one you've got outside is just like a like a square on it and uh, right. i think it connects to your wi-fi and stuff like that and it's got batteries oh, okay. in it oh okay uh, yeah and inside yeah. i think it is obviously mechanized i think yeah. there might be a physical lock on it on the back of it as well but yeah right it's okay pretty cool okay. expensive yeah. though yes yeah so so like i said I, I was thinking about where where we can go with this and is there anything and and out of all of the hacks and stuff that that we i say we've mentioned because we've, we've mentioned a few and some of them are silly and some is there any one that you think actually us three have mentioned is the one that you think actually you know what <laughs> i might try that or is it just like now nah, you know what i'm happy with what i'm doing yeah, i'm i'm gonna i'm just gonna keep doing what i'm doing is there anything that, that you've read that you think you know what or heard tonight that you think I am going to do that? It's it's funny you mentioned the the poached egg. So my missus loves making them, so I'm going to tell her about like cling film stuff. Yeah, but because because we had loads of eggs over Christmas for like you know making random stuff, cakes and stuff, um, she's kept making me poached eggs and having a beard. It's horrible because it just like <laughs> you bite into it and it goes boom all over your face. It's just like oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about the cling film thing. Right. But yeah, don't I, I knew about the. Uh... Chin, mate. That, that's, that's well, <laughs> I was just wondering that. Is that something you could do? Just a bit like the paint where you, you just line your beard it's just when you're biting your poached egg and you just wrap it up and happy day's done. <laughs> it's a good way of losing weight, though, isn't it? Put cling film and you go, eat, <laughs> yeah. and just pull it back out again. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that some sort of weird, like, sort of almost like waterboarding to torture? Like, you're lying there, like, like the food room's just like, you're just going to take it back out again. <laughs> Don't try that at home. No, home. please don't try. <laughs> please don't try that at home. No, um, it's funny because a- Amy mentioned one. So when when we're going shopping, she said if you haven't got um, if you haven't got a pound coin or you haven't got one of the keys for the locker, so just use a key. Just just obviously just turn the key. Just use a key. There you go. It unlocks it. Happy days. And I was like, really? Does that work? And she's like, yeah. I was like, no way. <laughs> so literally, if you haven't because I know people carry those. You know, the, the basically like the the coin size thing and they just put yeah. it on their keys don't they just put or you've got like a pound coin she's like no you can just use a key there you go it works you go. so so that yeah and i was like to be fair that that would be classed as a bit of a hack whether or not i try that and i don't know i'll just use a pound coin i suppose uh, we, we've done that <laughs> <Have you>? yeah <laughs> it works just don't forget it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah actually fair, i'd rather forget the pound coin than the key yeah, yeah that, where's my house key oh gosh darn it <laughs> <laughs> should you all way back to the shops just to retrieve your key brilliant um uh, well, I, go on. Sorry, I, I saw one on mythbusters once which i've used since and it's not i don't know it's not so much a life hack it's, it's, it's just a good top tip they did um adam savage did an experiment as to which you know, I don't particularly like using public lavatories, but every now and then you got to. And yeah. they did one, which is the cleanest stall. Now, when you walk into a lavatory, what is the first thing that you instinctively do? Walk back out. Well, yeah. You always walk past a couple of stalls and go in, don't you? That's one of those things you do. Yeah. And actually, because everybody does it, guess which one turned out to be the cleanest stall? Closest the closest one to the door. The closest one to the door. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've done, and I've started doing that. I've had some shockers where actually, no, somebody, somebody clearly only could have just made it yeah, in there. That's they they the next one. Yeah. <laughs> but for the most point, yeah, it turns out, it turns out to be true. Wow. There, there was something, and I remember it, it was on a, it was on a TV program. There's some sort of detective and stuff, and he said that they were looking at there had been a crime committed, and and he's like, well, which stall did they go to? Something. He said, well. Well, if it happened there, then there must have been somebody standing basically in store one. He said, well, why is that? Because he said, naturally, you wouldn't stand. If there's somebody standing in store one, you wouldn't go to two. You'd go to three. Just naturally, everybody would do that. There's no way that you would stand next to somebody if there was room for you to go, like, miss one. Do you know what I mean? 
and, it's like the and it's like written law, the urinals, isn't it? The urinals, yeah. even. Yeah, you're you right. Yeah. Stand next to someone. <laughs> yeah. you're literally, if there's, if there's, I mean, obviously, if you, if you're very sporting events and stuff, and there's no room, it's like, yeah, room for a small one or something. But if there's, if there's space, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's what I say. Um, so, but if there's, if obviously, if there is room, you would, you, you would miss one, and you'd, you'd go like every other one or whatever. So, um, but yeah, okay, I'd say you go to the first one, would you? Interesting. We had never. Next time I have to use a public toilet, I'll be like, oh, I didn't mention go to the first one. Okay, fair enough. In uh, um, 2022, when we get to go outside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And obviously, um, all of the previous um, podcasts where we've mentioned, we'll be doing this in 2021. Well, yeah, that might have to go on hold again. <laughs> Thanks to Bozza. Um, but, but one last one I'm going to, I'm sort of going to leave you with, and I think I will do this, is a, and, and, and <laughs> it goes back to um, my, my cooking skills of, um, a kettle and, and a microwave. If you've got a couple of dishes and you want and you, and you need to microwave them, and and Amy told me this again, and actually I was like, <laughs> genuinely like, no way, I'm going to do that. If they won't fit, right, this glass would be perfect because all that you then do is you put that in the microwave and you put the second bowl on top of the glass, and effectively you just stack one slightly higher than the other, and then they both fit in. Seriously, like. Mind blown. I'm not sure that glass is microwavable. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's not dishwashable. <laughs> I'm sure my missus will test it and find out. <laughs> you know, so if you've got like a couple of bowls or whatever, or a couple of you know dishes or whatever that you need to microwave or whatever, if they won't fit, just put a bowl, put a glass or a cup, and then just balance one on top, and effectively you just raise one, microwave both at the same time. And I was like, what? Oh, the other thing, tiny little glass of water if you're reheating pizza. You know, sometimes the bases go a bit like soggy and stuff when you reheat them and stuff, and then they go. If you put a glass of water in the microwave with it, they don't. It doesn't. It doesn't go soggy and actually reheats the pizza because actually all the moisture gets collected by the glass and the water. Oh, that's a bit. So therefore, that works. Um, so there's there's another one, little one for you. If, I if feel like we had a little in, a little look inside your life tonight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Heavily <laughs> cold <laughs> yeah, that's it. We literally never use mine, dude. It's like it's weird, but like obviously you mentioned that you had that slight issue over over the break with with the uh, the yeah. net, um, yeah. and you were like, "No, nah, I don't really use a microwave, do." And I know we we joke and stuff, but I mean, I use a microwave all the time, <laughs> like li- not necessarily for cooking like big meals and stuff, but literally all the time. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe you. Joke. No, I literally can't remember the last time. No, I can't remember the last time I used it. I can't. I mean, I'm sure it has been used. Like when the kids have had beans, I'm, probably, I'm sure I've done beans in there or something like that. But no, yeah, because obviously, you know, if you didn't hear or if you didn't see my my Twitter feed, my the glass on my oven shattered internally, so it imploded about four days before Christmas. And you know, we already had the goose in the fridge, so I was got it to be missing out on that but yeah fair play to Neff. they came out two days later and fixed it for us yeah uh, it was it was you know we were going to go for for barbecue turkey burgers in the back garden that was that was the ultimate yeah. well it's funny because obviously you know for those people who don't know obviously me and Ad, we, li- we live quite close to each other um so i was literally like dude if you want us to cut your turkey and we'll cook it for you literally i'll run it over he's like oh, well no we'll do barbecue instead but thanks very much sort of thing i was like oh well and then i was like God, I hope ours doesn't break now. You know what I mean? I hope our nephew's the same. But um, I mean, fair play to them, though. They came out and they did it, didn't they? So, yeah, um, right. But yeah, I can't, I, I couldn't get over you. Like, no, nah, I don't use a microwave. Because obviously, the microwave that we have, mm. you, that can be used as an oven. So you can use as a grill as yeah. an oven and a microwave as well and stuff. And I, I was like, I can't, but I said to Jenny, I was like, I'd never use this microwave. I was like, I use mine all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I've never needed to reheat a pizza, though. <laughs> Dude, honestly, it's like yeah, we I, I mean we, we use a microwave all the time, but yeah, that little glass of water, put a, put a glass, fill it sort of three quarters full of water. If you're reheating stuff, then then it doesn't sort of go soggy and stuff. That apparently that 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 works, and I have tried it a couple of times. Sometimes I forget and I'm like, oh, I should have put the water in, but you never do, sort of thing. Um, so there's a couple there that I I, I think I might try. Um, there isn't really anymore i'm just having a look at some of the things that daniel oh, amy mentioned like painting if keys look very similar is color code your keys and just put a little bit of like paint or dot them with a certain color t- to color code them to the lock if you can't remember which one is which so that's 
that's a little sort of thing that might save you some time if you've got a, like a massive bunch of keys and stuff. But um, just have a look at time. We I think we're about fifty odd, fifty five, fifty six odd minutes. So um, there's no real more live facts. It's a bit weird. It was a bit bit of a laugh, sort of slightly um, slightly light hearted look at just ways that you could perhaps save a little bit of time. Um, so looking forward to to next week. We have a bit of a surprise for you guys next week. Hopefully, if it works, I'm, I'm not going to say too much. Um, Ad, I don't know whether we want to sort of give any more teasers uh, 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 as to that or, or not. Um, it's it's well, it's related to a pastime that you and I both share. So yeah, I mean, it will be uh, it'll be about that. If you know, something yeah. we we tweet about fairly regularly. It's been on over Christmas as well, and no doubt people have watched the new new world number one, new world champion. Yes, yeah. So, so we have, so we have um, something that hopefully will be um, a little bit different lined up, lined up next week. Um, and then moving forward, um, again, we've got a couple of collaborations um, with um, various other podcasters that, that we're looking forward to. Ho- hopefully, they, you know, we can um, we we can get them up up and running off the ground as such. So, um, hopefully, exciting times to come for, from TBR. I know. We're in this dreaded lockdown now, um, and sort of life is a bit tough and stuff. And I know we 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 sort of got planned lots of things to do in 2021, or we did plan to do lots and lots of things in 2021. Um, hope that we can obviously still um, still do those things. Desperately, desperately hoping that we can get to the um, Darts Disability World Cup. I'm, I I really am really hoping that we can get there. I, I'm not holding out too much hope at the moment, but we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, I'd be gutted if if. A that gets cancelled, and B if that went ahead and we couldn't go. Um, so yeah, so uh, I hope we can we can do a couple of the collaborations with the various of the podcasters over the next sort of few weeks, coming months. Um, Andy, don't know whether there was anyone you sort of um, want to sort of say bye to anything that in particular you're sort of looking forward to. Is there anything that, that we we sort of spoken about in previous episodes? You think, yeah, that's the one that I really want to really want to get involved with. Um. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to some of the guests we've got lined up. It'll be yeah. uh, interesting. Yeah, uh, looking forward to Andy doing another and hosting another one. That that'll be. No, it'll be the worst one. The worst one that comes out. <laughs> <laughs> looking looking forward to um, to, to that. See, see you now that goes. Ad, is there anything in particular that, that you're looking forward to? I'm looking forward to you looking at the right time, dude. We're only 15 minutes in here. You've looked at the wrong one. You've looked at the length of call rather than the length of recording. <laughs> no, I have not. Yeah, I've been recording for 52 minutes. Have we? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, am I looking? At, okay. Well, I'm wrapping it up anyway now. So it's a slightly shorter one this week. And what are you looking forward to? Then go on, Phil. Then, as they say, um, what am I looking forward to? I don't know. Any, any, any number of things, to be honest with you. I, I'm looking forward to an opportunity at some point this year to do um, a few of the things that that we've got planned to do. Um, yeah, disability darts probably, I think, realistically, isn't going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's too, it's too, it's too close now, as it was for April. May time. Um, Scotland's in lockdown till mid February. Yeah, England's in lockdown, and we can't travel up that way till end of January. And let's face it, it's likely to continue. The poor weather means that you know more people are likely to be at risk, and the vaccine isn't going to roll out that quickly. Certainly not to us folks, anyway, who aren't really particularly high on the uh, on the at risk. Uh, schedule so yeah i just i just want to be able to do something get out and do it do something a bit different in the meantime though i i'm just looking forward to doing this again we've had a couple of weeks off and i've really really missed this over christmas and i took i did literally take the time off away from the podcast i haven't done anything towards it other than you know we did the um we changed the, sh- the, the store over after some of the feedback we had but that was a, a minor uh, minor thing um and then other than that was just the social media banging out a post a day uh, I'm actually looking forward to getting stuck into that book, writing the recipes for it, yeah. and just, just getting yeah. moving on that and getting a few people on talking about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, and as I say, the, the disability darts. I mean, I I actually played um, Mitch um, tonight just before we came on um, in the, the sort of the, the stuck at home darts league. He beat me. I played really well, but couldn't hit a double, uh, double trouble three, um, yeah. and. Uh, and and obviously chatting to him and and stuff and I and I sort of said, is it likely to still go ahead? And he was a bit like, mm, not sure, not sure. And he, if you don't know, he's he's um, got a prosthetic arm and he he's been the England captain. I don't know whether he's this. I don't think he's the captain this year. And Mitch, I apologise if you are, but um, he um, 
in the past he's been the captain of the England Disability Darts team, and he was a bit like, not sure, d- don't don't know. We're hoping so. So it was similar to what we're saying in terms of us going to go visit. He was saying about actually, you know, the participation. So I, I hope it can. Um, I really, really want to do a follow up to the parapsychology one. Um, that that's one that. I really enjoyed doing first time round, and we 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 had so many ideas about what we could do moving forward. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, sort of looking forward in a way because it, it was it's a surprising episode in as much as I didn't realise that we we all had a sort of interest in it. it was obviously the the cars one, and we talked about the American Muscle Cars and that you know your Route 66 and that sort of stuff. So looking forward maybe to sort of perhaps investigating Route 66 a little bit more and the history of it and the places it goes and some of the stories behind Route 66. So that might be something that I'm sort of looking forward to following and following up. Um, but the the going out and doing the outside broadcast, I really, really, really am looking forward to doing, if we can, mm. at some point. Do you know what I mean? Taking TBR on the road and, and basically taking recording equipment or whatever – trying to sit in a room all three of us together not socially distancing and actually recording either a live episode or do you know what i mean and yeah. and, and have interaction and, and just being able to do that and we said as well like we wanted to work with a few other podcasts as well this year that was one of our goals for 2021 wasn't yeah. it and actually just thinking yeah. about that if we're going to do route 66 and we've talked with tilly and china a few times about getting them on and, and doing something with them maybe that would be a good one to do because those guys both are uh, tulsa oklahoma which is on route 66 so yeah that might, that might be i just think it at. might be quite a nice we, it was something that we all mentioned it would probably be on our bucket list various people at various places on our bucket list but actually you know jumping in a muscle car and the three of us going sort of route 66 but i just because it's such a a famous route and obviously there's lots of different stories attached to route 66 and various cities and various towns and i i, I just like the idea of exploring that route a little bit more and just trying to pick up the odd story here or there on you know did you know and were you aware and that sort of stuff so that that might be something that ties in quite nicely if if Tiddy and shine are listening and you know they want to get involved with that that'd be that'd be brilliant um, you know, so um, so yeah. Look, looking forward to what what what's to come in in twenty twenty one. A little bit of a light hearted episode tonight, in terms of hopefully um, we've made you smile with a couple of our stupid life hacks, Coca Cola life hacks, etc. etc. Me and tales of my cooking feats in terms of <laughs> and microwaves and this that and the other. Andy trying to eat using cling film, sort of thing. That that's so. Um, yeah, don't try that at home, kids. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. I, I don't know whether or not you want to sort of um, say your goodbyes. Yeah, just just thank you, thank you for listening. Uh, you know, all the people in the 25 countries that listen to us, and we're looking forward to to welcoming 26, 27, 28, and so on throughout 2021. Uh, but yeah, great to be back is what I'd say. I've really missed this over the last couple of weeks. Uh, really, really missed it. So it's just, you know, I thought we'd feel a little bit rusty, but we we slipped back into it like a comfortable shoe. Is it well put, uh, <laughs> Andy? I'm going to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good to be back and all that. Yeah, uh, no, no, it is good to be back. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll look forward to the next one. I might drink on the next one. <laughs> it's been a couple of days. <laughs> it's not. It's not the same. It's not, when I did, what did I do? I did. Did I do? Did I manage to do? I don't know. I did three weeks or whatever. What did I do? Four weeks. I said I was going to do a month, and I don't think I quite managed it. But but there we go. Um, yeah, listen, guys, it's been it's been great to get back. Um, like I say, slightly more lighthearted th- th- this one. Look forward to sort of delving into um, a couple of different um, sort of topics moving forward. Um, just really, really left for me to say. Um, Episode 51 done, ticked off. Look forward to um, next week's episode 52. See where it takes us. Um, and if anyone has any life hacks, if anyone wants to take any umbrage or take any beef with any of the ones that we've mentioned, again, get in touch. We, we like feedback, so positive or negative. We'll take that on board and um, we'll keep moving forward. Um, here's to the next um, year. I hope 2021 is a good one for you guys. See you later. <laughs>